Okay, you'll notice I'm zoomed here on a sectional view of Addison, which is Dallas, Texas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch the airport with my finger, and I'm going to touch full screen. That opens up my airport view. First thing I'm going to do is save it as a favorite by touching the star button. Then I'm going to touch procedures, which is already up for me. You'll notice if I click on airport, it always brings the Jeppesen charts first, then for flight, then FAA. So if I touch approach, same thing, Jeppesen and then FAA. If I touch the FAA RNAV15, you'll notice I have that already marked up the way I want it marked up. So I want to mark up those same notes, but on a Jeppesen view. So I'm going to touch close. And then I'm going to touch the Jeppesen RNAV15, and I'll make all of the same markups, but on a Jeppesen plate. So it doesn't matter if I hit Jeppesen or government, they're both geo-referenced with ForeFlight. It's the only program that does this. And they've both got all my important highlighted notes. So I'm going to zoom in by putting a finger here and a finger here and just spreading them apart and moving them so I can see what I'm marking up. I'm then just going to touch the pen button. I like pink, but I probably need a little smaller. So I'm going to touch here and I'm going to change it to maybe about 20 by dragging the slider over. And I'm going to reduce the opacity to about 50%, again, just by dragging the slider. That way it'll act like a highlighter and won't block anything out. Now if I just touch anywhere off the screen, and then I use my Apple Pencil, I want to highlight the important things to me. So the first thing I'm going to do is highlight ATIS on 133.4. I know I need the current ATIS before I talk to regional approach on 124.3. After I talk to them, I'll then go to Addison Tower, which turns into Common Traffic 126.0, and you'll notice the little asterisk before it means part-time tower. Okay, it's a WAS approach, that's fine. I'm going to highlight my final approach course, which is what I set my OBS to on 155. My minimum altitude at Jarrett, which is 2,000 feet, and my LPV decision altitude, which is conditional at 944, meaning there might be something that raises that. And my touchdown zone elevation is 644 feet. If I get scared and lost anywhere near my final approach, uh, my missed approach point of runway W15, RW15, if I climb to 3600, I won't hit anything. My missed approach, every missed approach on the planet starts with a climb to 3000, direct VEXI, a 074 track to TRIS, and hold. All right, let's highlight the notes that are important to me. I don't highlight altimeter setting inches. I always use inches. Transition level, meaning above 18,000, you're always using 2992. So below 18,000, below 18,000, you switch to the local altimeter setting. And that's all that those two things mean. If I don't get the local altimeter setting, I'm going to use the Dallas Love altimeter setting. How do I get the Dallas Love altimeter setting? Well, that's easy. Every time I talk to a new approach controller, the first thing they do is give me a local altimeter setting. So if I'm unable to get the ATIS, the first time I talk to regional approach 124.3, they will give me the Dallas Love altimeter setting. All right. I am not DME, DME, RNP. I'm not Barrow VNAV, my Cessna 206 doesn't have anywhere near the appropriate equipment for either one of those. I'm not uncompensated Barrow VNAV, I don't care. LNAV VNAV is not going to happen for me. 
Although the Avidine and the Garmin GTN are both approved for LNAV VNAV, it's not going to offer you that option. It's going to either be LPV or LNAV only. So I don't have to care about that note. Now it is important to know that vertical glide slope, meaning looking at the Papi or the Vasi and the RNAV glide path are not the same. It says not coincidence. It just means if I'm on the RNAV glide path, it might look like I'm high or low compared to the Vasis. All right, I'm not a helicopter, don't care. Pilot control lighting is on 126.0. So if I go in at night, I can turn on the lights on the common traffic by clicking the mic three, five, or seven times. So looking at the four flight, or, uh, sorry, the Jeppesen map view, the biggest difference is between this and government plates is everything shown is to scale. Okay, so finger can get me to Manos, which can get me to Sorn. Those are flyable courses. We know they're flyable courses because they have a magnetic reference bearing, an altitude, and a distance. So, finger, 3,227 to Manos, 3,000 on a 280 to Sorn, which is my initial approach fix. Now, Auric is also an initial approach fix, and that gives me 216 at 2100 to Banu. Sorn to Banu is 2100 to 245. Banu is an intermediate fix. An intermediate fix can replace an initial approach fix if the turn to final or radar vector to final to that waypoint that turn to the final course of 155 is 90 degrees or less. Obviously, if I start at Auric or Finger or Monos or Sorn, Banu's just a fix. But if I'm, let's say I'm up here and they say direct Banu, I can proceed straight in because coming from here, the turn to final would be 90 degrees or less. If I'm here, they can't send me to Banu because it'd be too sharp a turn to go inbound. They would have to vector me out here to maybe Sorn then Manu, or here, or they could just vector me to final. But they can't send you to Banu if the turn to final is gonna be more than 90 degrees. All right, here's my final approach course, 155. And I have a waypoint named Jarrett, and a missed approach point of runway 15. Now you'll notice my missed approach is drawn out straight to Vexi, 074 to Tris, and that looks like a direct entry to me. Now I want to show you something. Manos, Sorn, Banu, those are little stars. Runway 15 is in a circle. Tris is in a circle, which means GPS roll steering can lead the turn, lead the turn, lead the turn. But you must fly over a circled waypoint. So Jarrett, Banu, Sorn, and Manos are fly-by waypoints. Runway 15 and Tris are mandatory fly over before turning. So that's the difference. Now if I look at the profile view, outside of Manu's 2100, outside of Jarrett is 2000. So is Jarrett my final approach fix? Yes and no. So I'm actually not going to highlight in pink. I'm going to change my highlight color to blue. Jarrett is my final approach fix if I'm shooting This is an LNAV approach, meaning I do step downs. So after Jarrett, I step down to a thousand feet. So 2100, step down to 2000, drive to Jarrett, step down to 1000, fly to the missed approach point of runway 15. 
Those are step downs. Those are dive and drive. That's like exactly like a localizer, a VOR, an SDF, an NDB approach. So if I'm shooting this as a LPV, localizer precision with vertical decisions, then I track a glide path. I don't stop at 1100. I can go all the way to 944. So I'm going to put these notes up here by doing text. So I'm going to touch text. Right now I've left it as blue. So I'm going to put LNAV here, L1100. So I'm just going to touch anywhere on the screen. Touch right there. I'm going to change it to 10, the smallest font. I'm going to touch L. Then I'm going to click on the numbers keyboard, 11. Then I'm going to click done. But before I do that, see how it's still faded? I want to make sure the opacity is all the way up. So it's dark blue. Then I'm going to click done. And if I touch that, I can actually make it quite a bit bigger. So it's readable. And you'll notice there are different font sizes that work on JEP charts versus government charts. So on government charts, I always want 10. Looks like on JEP charts, a good 40 point font will be fine. I'm going to click done. And then I'm just going to touch it and drag it over to here. So after Jarrett, if I'm LNAV only, I go to 11. Now I need to put in all my altitudes if I'm flying this as a LPV, which includes a glide path. So I'm going to put a P for path. So what I like to do is I'm just going to touch anywhere. I'm going to touch text again. I'm going to change my color to red and white. Touch over here. Then I'm going to add it just by touching anywhere I want. So between Banu and Jarrett, you'll notice the altitude's not shown here on the Jeppesen chart. So I want to put in 2000 here. So I'm just going to touch right there. I'm going to change it to 40 just by holding down on the plus. And then I'm just going to touch the numbers. And I use 20 for 2000. Then I'm going to click Done. And I'm just going to move it so it's a little closer to my path, just about there. Then after Jarrett, if I'm Precision, I can go down to 944. Now, I always round my numbers up. So I'm going to make my Precision 1000. Why? Because if I go down to the minimum of 944, and then I add power, there's a human delay response, means I'll descend through it. If I go down to a thousand and then add power to go missed, I might sink to 950 or 960, but I won't go below my minimums. So I encourage people to always round up, but I'm not gonna change it down here. In an emergency, I wanna know I can go all the way down to 944. I'm just gonna put that number up here. So I'm gonna touch text, Touch over here, change it to 40, and I'm going to put P for path or precision, and put 1000, and I abbreviate that 10. Then I'm going to hit done, and I'm just going to put that. Moving it here to right about there. So now I know, and I can see on the georeference chart, it should be at 3,000 here, 2,100 here, 2,000 here. If I intercept the glide path at 2,000, the final approach fix for an LPV is glide path interception at 2,000, which happens to be the same place as the final approach fix for an LNAV only approach, which is Jarrett. And if I'm tracking a glide path, I can go down to 1,000. 
if I'm LNAV only, I stop at 1100. And then right here, I'm going to put the text for the missed approach. So if I scroll back up, my missed approach is climb 3000, direct vexy, then a left turn to 074 to Tris and hold, and that would be a direct entry. So I'm going to touch text, touch here, and I can go ahead and change this now to, we'll call it uh, 48 point. Then just touch anywhere on the screen, it doesn't matter, because I'm going to move it. I'll touch it right here. And I'm going to type in my missed approach using the shorthand I have. So I'm going to do missed approach, MA, all in caps. And then I'm going to touch the little happy face button and use my up arrow and then type in the numbers 30. So the missed approach is climb 3000, direct space, and if I touch this button twice, it will stay in all capitals, V E Y X E. Then I'm going to make a left turn, 074. Direct Tris and do a direct entry at the hold, which if I look at the hold, my outbound course would be 254. So it would be a direct right turn 254 for the hold. Done. Then I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to put it where it will do the most good, right there. Now the reason I take all these notes is so when I'm flying, I can zoom in and just show the map view. This gives me everything I need. I don't have to look up and down at profiles, and it reduces my workload. So now, if I touch done and then if I do this and forward it to the map look at that it overlays the route I'm gonna, and I can zoom in nice and big and see the entire approach and that's why I think everybody should mark it up whether you prefer Jeppesen or government these are the same notes I take on both and again the great thing about ForeFlight is that it offers you both options.